Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to devlog number 28 for a spaceship game that I'm making with my buddy Rich in Unreal Engine 5. We've been working on this game since January of this year, and I am really excited about the progress that we've made over the past couple weeks. We're trying to figure out how to connect the entire world together in a way that makes sense, has nice clean loading sequences, and will essentially facilitate the entire progression of the game. Simple task, right? Well, I think we finally cracked the workflow on that along with some big movement updates that are in the pipeline, getting our Steam development pipeline set up, and tons of other stuff. Let's get into it with our space transit. Last devlog, I showed off this sequence here, flying over a trigger box, which essentially faded the screen out and loaded a new level. And what this sequence proved here is that just loading levels the basic way for our design is not gonna work. We needed a different system. So I began researching data layers within Unreal Engine 5's new world partition system. And here, we do a very quick transition between two levels. This is done by using level instances and data layers. So basically we have a giant master level and within that master level are multiple levels that are being unloaded and loaded as we need them. The levels can be as big or as small as we want them to be. However, loading and unloading massive amounts of data, especially at the visual fidelity level that we want to achieve in this game, is not really instantaneous, and especially when we start playing on slower devices, it's gonna need a little more time. So we began blocking out this transit system. The ship is building up its protective bubble, and then blam, we're in the transit process. This will give us as much time as we need to load the next level. And while we don't have the outro transition or really the intro transition design quite yet, this concept should carry us through to the final vision. So the way it's going to work in our game world is we could have this massive system here. There's a little white dwarf over there. Here's a black hole that it's orbiting around. And here's a more traditional star over here. Around this star can be multiple planets, multiple moons, asteroid belts, whatever we want. And to travel between these locations, players will need to do a jump. And behind the scenes, there's quite a lot going on. And I'm going to let Rich explain the whole construction of this process. So let's walk through the whole jump process, which for now is just this big messy function for our prototype. As you can see for a transition that just takes a few seconds, a lot goes into it. Lots of little steps. Once we get our foundation laid and we figure out the basic jump process from there, it's only going to get more complicated as we develop the game. So we're going to be splitting it up into more blueprints. We're going to be moving some of this into C++, optimizing it and so on. But this is great for quickly being able to rearrange things and figure out our initial prototype. So let's do a jump and I'll walk through it and explain what's going on. All right. So first thing I'll do is I'll use a cheat to set up our jump point. This will create a little target. It added an icon to the nav ring. It's a little bit hard to see. So I'm going to move over to this asteroid. So that icon should be pretty clear now. That's our that's our targeted jump point. Um, so I have to meet a few conditions in order to activate the jump. I need to be uh, pointed toward the icon. I need to be moving toward the icon. And then I need to be up, up to a certain speed. Right now I'm at 11 meters per second. I need to be going 250. So let's um, just boost it up to that. And as soon as I hit speed, this little bubble starts to appear. As soon as We've met the conditions, this turned green. Now we're starting at the beginning of this function. The function is called, first thing we're doing is this section. We're turning off the player input, saying once you're in warp, we don't want you messing up the jump, so turn off your input. Um, same thing here. If you were boosting your rockets, uh, we'll stop that. You're jumping now, not boosting. Um, play the bubble effects. If available is only a question right now because only the destroyer has the art for the bubble. Um, once we get more art for all the ships, this won't be a question anymore. It'll just be uh, a given. Now we're delaying four seconds because we want to get four seconds into the bubble animation. And right at that point is when we want to go into our little tunnel. Um, 
there's better ways to do this, but this is our quick prototype. So we're just going to put in a little delay that's hard coded for four seconds. Now, if we go back here, let's wait for, uh, let's run this and then wait for the four second timer to run out. Okay. Now we've got purple everywhere and some weird stuff happening here, but we're fixing that. Um, what happens after the delay is um, we've got this warp tunnel effects. This is the big purpleness that's everywhere. That just uh, got uh, unhidden. We got rid of the HUD. We're hiding the nav ring. We're making a note of the velocity of the ship because we're going to use that later. We're actually stopping the ship um, because this effect makes it look like uh, it's moving, but we need the ship to not actually be moving. Um, if it was actually moving, there, there could be problems with that. Um, we're just going to stop it for now. <laughs> then we're activating the data layer at the destination. And that is telling World Partition that it's okay to start loading stuff in this data layer. Immediately after that, we're, we're teleporting the player to that location. And uh, the, the player is what's called a streaming source, which is a weird name for it, but it tells the World Partition system uh, everything around this little streaming source, start loading it. That's getting everything loaded. And then we start another delay. And that's really, so we have a little bit of time to load everything and we're just sitting in this tunnel during that time. We, you know, some bugs here, some indicators are starting to show up because we're starting to see the level streaming in. Cause I, you know, tried to hide the nav ring, but there's a little bug there where the, not everything in the nav ring stays hidden. Let's go ahead and uh, finish the jump. Or we'll finish this timer in the in the tunnel. And then we're done. We see we've got our little, um, little bit of velocity here. So as soon as this delay is over, that's when, boom, the purple goes away and you see the new uh, location that you're at. Now we unload the location that we're no longer at. We get rid of the purple tunnel. We give the player control back. We reset the targeting system so the jump point is not selected anymore. They got to reselect one. Bring the HUD and the nav ring back. And then finally, give it that little push. Give the ship that little bit of movement that we were talking about. Made a note of the direction and now we're making it uh, 50, 50 meters per second instead of 250. You're not going to accidentally hit an asteroid uh, right after you do a jump. So yeah, that's this beast of a function that we're starting out with and working with it for a prototype. And this will only continue to get bigger and better. So we've also been progressing with our movement system in the game. This is a complete overhaul to the way that Rich designed the initial movement system. Mr. Meteor, a programmer, has been building a plugin for our game that will not only translate all the movement over to realistic physics, where the mass of the ship will impact how quickly it can accelerate and stuff like that, but it's a versatile system that can put rocket engines on any direction of the ship, and now we can have uh, a lot of control over how we want to build out a ship. So if we want a combat ship to have reverse thrusters or even side thrusters for dodging in combat, we can now accelerate. Uh, we've also tied this to a new fuel system. So if you look in the lower right hand corner, we're depleting fuel when we engage our rocket engines. And so fuel will be used uh, primarily for boost maneuvers in this game and it'll be very valuable in combat situations where if you need to dodge or get away quickly you're going to want that fuel and lastly there's some behind the scenes stuff where we're working on the steam page and branding for the game but uh, i'm not quite ready to show that off just yet so we've been making a lot of progress and honestly i just can't wait to refine some of the systems that we just got started building like the transit system i know we can push that so much further. Uh, if you guys want to follow this project even closer, check out our Discord. It's linked in the video description. There we post kind of questions about how to build something. We ping the community. We post updates. Uh, it's a good time. Check it out for sure. And if you want to learn more about the game, check out the rest of the dev vlog here, along with a video describing the overall concept for it. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.